Hello ladies and mostly gentlemen, I'm Vinny B and I think we all dreamed of flying and by so we all experienced that incredible feeling of weightlessness. The most frequent dream I had was me running and jumping really high in the air. So today I'm gonna build a machine to mimic exactly that experience and it might be a dangerous endeavor but I mean of what can go wrong. Let me give you an overview of what I will build. As a platform, I will use my air bike trailer, then I'll put a base on it, followed by a turret, which will rotate 360 degrees, then comes the main arm, the secondary arm, and a human basket. To balance everything, I'll have a counterweight on the opposite side. The dual arm action will keep me level during jumps, and I should be able to run endlessly with the rotating turret. Good, let's move to the 3D to get some actual dimensions. After a quick sketch, I designed it in SolidWorks, run some simulations, was not satisfied with the safety factor, which is almost none, beefed up everything, made some plans, and was ready to start building the base of the flying machine. Here's a tip for you guys, because I'm a lazy man. When I want to switch from inside to outside jaws on my late chuck, I'm using a standard 3 8 drill adapter to quickly remove the jaws. Okay, warning, this tip won't give you the ability to correctly put back on the jaws. As proof. <laughs> Since all my projects are eco-friendly, or some say it's because I'm too cheap, but I always try to do with what I have in my scrap pile. Like in this case, the part I'm machining comes from the Smart Booza Sprocket Diff thing build. By the way, it's a very good video. But it's only now that I realize I forgot the set screw and the part. Yeah, like it's already shaped like a bullet. So if it comes loose while turning in the lake, I mean, Ouch. Everything was going smoothly. I was gluing metal pieces together with molting metal. Who wrote that? I mean, I was just welding parts and drilling holes. So everything was going right until the shit hit the fan. <laughs> ah, but where's all the feet? <sighs> I know it's part of the process of building things, but when things go wrong, you know, it's hard to deal with sometimes. So all the parts you're seeing here are in fact Exactly this. This is a keyless chuck. This is the one uh, from my lathe and this one is from my milling. Unfortunately, after destroying all the teeth on the Ulsa, I also uh, broke my uh, keyless chuck. Because, you see guys, these little fellas. Focus. Thank you. Uh, these are the jaws. This is one of these. And these were falling off the chuck. Don't know why. So after a couple of YouTube videos, I figured out how to disassemble one of these because uh, some section are um, pressed in with tapers and some are screwed in like this one. So you need to know which is which. And then I finally arrived at the problem. This is the you focus. This is uh, let's call it a crowned screw. Uh, it grabs on the three jaws like this. And uh, I don't know what happened, but uh, it seems that I bent the thing, widening the openings, and now the jaws were coming loose. So hopefully with some uh, tappy tap tap, I will be able to uh, close those gaps and put everything back together because I need you to complete the project. Oh, and I forgot to mention that I started that amazing uh, disassembly adventure by snapping off the round tip of that allen key snapping this thing off right inside that bolt which is deeply located inside here so for maybe half an hour i was trying to remove that broken part by tapping the part on the table as you can see some marks over there on the aluminum plate unfortunately i didn't film it but here's a reenactment of what happened 
Non, non, pourquoi il pété dedans? Tu ça allait bien, là. Toi, t'allais bien, là. On faisait des trous, pas que tout a pété. Et puis rien qui va tabarnak de cochonnerie du pas là. All right, see you in a few minutes, guys. Seems to work. Because I didn't have a spare three inch also, I found another way to finish the hole. We're done with the base, so let's tackle the turret. Let's add a bit of coolant. Oh, yep, uh, that's the downside of having an unheated shop. Because, you know, I was really relying on that global warming thing, but I guess I'll have to find another way to heat the shop. Oh well. Now for the coolant problem, I think I've got an idea. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry, I know, it's kind of gross, uh, and I'm still a kid, because somehow, when I did that joke, it made me laugh. <laughs> like, a lot. <laughs> I don't know if it comes from the material I was machining, uh, which is 4340. Oh, what is 4340 steel, you might ask? Well, according to Google, it's a ultra high strength steel. You see, I'm only using what's best for my safety, because in fact, this shaft will be the main pivot part. So that's why I'm using an ultra high strength steel. Or maybe it's because uh, that was the longest shaft I had in my scrap pile. Uh, but no, I mean, because safety, right? Anyhow, machining this material form a long steel string that I had to reel, and I end up, no joke, with this big metal bush, only from machining one little shaft. The turret and base are completed. Let's start working on the main beam, which will be made primarily from an old house deck. Beside the ruts, which I'll talk about later, the downside of repurposing some old steel is the prep time. It involves a lot of cutting, grinding, and cleaning of the, uh, let's call it outgrowth, just to get a not even straight piece of tubing. A note to self, let's never do that again, just to save a few bucks. That one, like 20 to go, 15, I don't know. To cut some prep time, I decided to use my milling machine to remove those uh, outgrowth. It was way more efficient than with a grinder. Shiny. 
I know it's not that crucial, but before welding everything together, I'm using the string trick to validate that the main structure was on a flat plane. As you can see on this model, uh, we only want the string to barely touch each other in the middle. That will guarantee that all four corners are located on the same flat plane. But don't overdo it. You might bend the strings and think that you're all set, but in fact, you're not. As they say, measure twice, well once. Kinda hate the measure once, well once, fuck, it's crooked, cut it once, weld it back again. Whoops. Whoa, almost there. Easy. Looks good. This is the main up-down pivot for the beam. Now let's add some gussets. Okay, now it's time to flip the frame over, and if you remember when I flipped my airbag trailer frame, it was quite a show. Hopefully this time, it will be too. <laughs> By the way, it's a very good video. Fast. Brother. Now it was time to prepare my metal skewer, which will be the hinge of the beam. Yep, I decided to make it foldable. Not that I want to transport it from place to place, but simply so it could be somewhat manageable the day I want to store it away. You know, for when my neighbors will make me funny looks, cause uh, there's a giant 40 feet long crane looking thing sitting in my driveway for the past month. Uh, you know, I'm full of good tips for you guys and another one is to, uh, I don't know, put a rag on the pointy things that will stick out of your build. Because uh, I just impaled myself with these two and uh, fucking hurts, man. <laughs> so yeah, a rag or something, tape it, I don't know. Oh my god, that fucking hurt. There you go, much better. Right, the rust issue. Like I mentioned previously, the house deck steel had some surface rust, and I tried to run some simulations on my computer to validate if the safety factor was okay, but when I did... Let's add some rust and... Well, it's not like I can add rust in the software and run simulations. To be on the safe side, I decided to add a bunch of cables to strengthen the frame. So I'm almost done with this frame, I just have to finish the rear section. And yes, the old flying or bouncing machine will be huge! Because this section barely fits in my shop, and you have to remember, this is only half the overall length of the machine. For counterweight, I'm using barrels as receptacles, but not to hold water. Because you know, I'm in Northern Canada, and water will freeze overnight. Kinda difficult to fine tune the right point of balance between me and the counterweight with ice. No, instead, I'll be using bags of crushed stone. Woof. Woo! We're having a cold one today. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna get the app open. I'm gonna choose my city. It's kind of a cold one today. Doesn't happen really often, but today they close parks, skating rings, and even all the ski resorts are closed. This is really not common in Canada to close those outside activities. So now I need to snow pie. Even It's even kind of hard to talk. Now I need to snow plow my driveway so I can get the trailer in position. So yes, I could wait for water weather to come in, but I just want to be done with this face and be able to upload this video. So yeah, really cold, but we're gonna get through this. Hopefully.
one frozen wasteland later. <laughs> Remember how cocky I was flipping the frame a moment ago? Well, I wasn't laughing anymore, because that thing is heavy. I could not imagine how difficult and dangerous the installation of the main beam on the turret had become. With all my camera's batteries dead because of the cold, so with no footage of it, I slowly and carefully managed to couple the main beam with the turret. For now on, and for the rest of this build, yeah, I won't be rushing anything to get them done. Seriously guys, I was very lucky on this one. But on a bright side, voila. <laughs> it's already a lot of fun. And it's just now that I realize how huge and stupid this thing is. If you didn't get how nuts this project is, let me overlap the 3D model on top of the real thing. Okay, I know we have to take into account the optical perspective, but still, it's mental. If you're asking me why I build things like this, or like the Smart Boozer, at this point, I just don't know. Alright, so that's the end of part 1. On part 2, I'm gonna complete the machine, and on part 3, it's gonna be the first test run. If you're new to this channel, you might wanna consider subscribing if you don't wanna miss the first trials of this death trap. But till then, go do something with your head, your hands, or both. Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs> Je suis un acteur